I've got the trailer hooked up and today we are heading north to an Angus breeder to buy another bull. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. I just pulled into Split Creek Ranch and I've never been here before, so I'm not really entirely sure where I'm going. I guess I'll just keep following this driveway until I see something that looks like where I should be heading. We made it up here to Split Creek Ranch and I'm standing here with Jeremy, the owner. I'm gonna buy a bull today, not in the traditional sense, but before we get to that, I wanna have Jeremy talk a little bit about what they do here and take it away. <laughs> so I wanna welcome you to Split Creek Ranch up here in Tehama County. My wife and I run a small uh, registered Angus seed stock operation. We do have a few registered Sim Angus as well. We use artificial insemination and embryo transfer, as well as genomic enhanced EPDs to try to produce elite uh, black hided cattle to serve the commercial cattlemen here in Northern California. You mentioned embryo transfer and that is kind of important for a reason why I'm here. Explain what, what is embryo transfer. Embryo transfer allows you to take any cow you own and make her a recipient and carry what's called a donor cow's calf. So a donor is a elite cow that you've identified either through her genomics or a combination of her pedigree genomics and her phenotype. And you have hyperovulated and flushed her and bred those eggs to the elite bull that complements her. And then you take those eggs and put them into all of your other cows so that when your calf crop comes, all of your calves are from your very best cow or if you purchase the embryos from a very elite cow. So that's embryo transfer. So basically you're taking the eggs from the best cows and the semen from the best bulls, fertilizing those eggs and you can put those, those eggs in any cow. She can carry it and raise the calf. I'd like to show you a cow that we're going to use as a donor in the future. This cow here is a Henrietta Pride cow tribe sired by LD Capitalist 316. And if you look at this cow, you can see she's moderate framed, always keeps her flesh, very fertile cow, excellent udder, excellent feet, great disposition. Um, when you identify that cow in your herd, that's really the standout. And then also we have, of course, gene sequence this cow using genomic enhanced EPDs. So we know that she has very desirable genomic traits as to include calving ease, growth, carcass characteristics. Right now, all the embryos we've ever done are embryos we purchased because we're a new program. We're building up our own genetic base. And the quickest way, as you know, Tyler, to accelerate uh, your genetics is artificial insemination or embryo transfer. So for now, we've been purchasing embryos and we're kind of at that five year mark where this is a cow that we think could easily be a donor. Um, we have a couple of more that are like her, so we may end up flushing three or four of our cows here in the coming future and use them as donors in the program. And you can see she's real wild. This cow behind you, this is uh, Mary Magdalene. This is a cow that uh, we raised here on the ranch who is so docile that she won't yeah. even get up when you scratch her. For a cow to, to not get up with <laughs> us standing right next to her, that says a lot. One thing we can offer is that you can come here, walk around, you can see our cows. We'll halter break them for you. Um, I sold the bull last year where I actually halter just walked him right onto the guy's trailer. <laughs> the guy was thrilled. Docility to me is a very important trait uh, like in our scenario where we're empty nesters. It's just my wife and I in a rural area. I don't want a wild cow. Yeah, I had a, a friend of mine say that the older you get the more important docility becomes as, as far as traits go. <laughs> The 
Explain, if you would, why you guys freeze brand instead of hot brand. We freeze brand because we're registered breeders. Um, generally speaking, though a freeze brand is not recognized by the California uh, Ag Board, uh, it's my understanding at some point it will be. We do think it's more humane, and we're not too worried about uh, our cows being stolen here so far. So we just have stuck with freeze branding. We are relatively new. I wouldn't say that we have a fundamental opposition to hot iron brand. The truth is I don't own a hot iron brand. I own a freeze brand at the moment and uh, it's worked out fine for us so far. So does this white one have a freeze brand and we just can't see it? Or? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I have to find a, I have to wait to turn him, find a way to turn his black. Freeze branding just kills the hair follicle and that's why they have a white brand on them. It's, when their hair grows back, it grows back white. There are a lot of really nice looking animals in this pen. Show me the one that I'm buying. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. She is right here. So this is a cow born September 6, 2017. Uh, she, her mother was a half Angus, half Holstein commercial cow. Her mother was actually the first cow we ever bought. She's coming five years old. She's had three calves previously. She's about to have her fourth calf for you on September 14th. And that calf is an embryo. We already ultrasounded and know that it's a bull pregnancy. The sire is SAV Bismarck, a legend in the Angus breed. The dam is a cow out of the Virginia Tech Angus program called VTEXT W89. Remember that, Tyler. <laughs> She's a direct daughter of Enbar Emulation out of a Traveler cow. So for your Angus junkies out there that know Traveler, Traveler was a breed legend in the Angus world. Look at these, these wild cows here. <laughs> They're trying to get me. Oh man, look out. I told you either halter broke or very docile. This is an EMB plus one on, Quaker Hill, on a Quaker Hill Rampage cow. And this one doesn't like me petting this one. Apparently she's bumping me. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting the way there's this perception that cattlemen are rough with their animals and mean to them. And yet the more cattlemen you meet, the more you realize that a lot of people can pet their cows. And a lot of people treat them not completely like pets, but more like pets than what the perception would suggest. They give so much back to us. We treat them with compassion. Uh, we care about their well-being. We sleep at night knowing that our cows are exceptionally well cared for. And at the end of the day, I think a docile cow is a lot safer. So you guys know that I'm, I'm big on good cattle handling facilities. It's better for the handler, it's better for the cattle and Jeremy's setup is pretty nice. So take us through. So you're gonna bring them into this pen that we're standing in first. Yeah. And from here, what happens? Yeah, so this is our first sorting pen. If we're bringing a small group in, we can turn them back out for the ones we don't want. But for the ones that we're gonna start working into the system from here, they're gonna come up into this main sorting alley, if you will. alley we have two smaller pens so if we're working calves we'll maybe we'll split the bull calves into one pen and the heifer calves into another pen we push the bigger you know the cows back into this bigger pen and then when we have everybody kind of sorted we work them through this alley the way we work is my wife works the alley here and i work the uh the squeeze chute we have a sheeted sweep so uh you know how this works, it's chained, but uh, we yeah. sweep them through. <laughs> Wasps living in here now. <laughs> yeah. So this is similar to my setup, except this is a 180 sweep. Mine is just a, a quarter turn. So these are actually nicer, but it was harder to build, so I didn't build one like this. <laughs> this is a mix of things I picked off of Craigslist. A few of this is new pieces that we purchased because they're hard to find used. A lot of the panels are used or they were here on the ranch when we bought it. Uh, so we run them through the sweep into this adjustable alley. We come on to the, to the scale. We have load bars that are mounted on a concrete foundation. And then they work their way into the chute. You know, we can open the back of the gate right here to let them into the chute or open it from the other side. And then in the chute, when they're in the chute, we have a palpation cage because as we're doing so much artificial insemination and embryo transfer this is makes the vet's life a lot easier 
makes the vet willing to come out here <laughs> to your ranch and feel like they're not going to get killed while they're here. And this is our new aero equip. We just had this, uh, we bought this earlier this year. Uh, to finance buying this, I picked off of Craigslist some stuff that I cleaned up and resold and helped uh, raise the funds to purchase this. But uh, I really like this because it opens so wide. Uh, it's got the breast bar so that they don't go down. You can open the head gate. The head gate can open from the rear or anywhere you want on an arrow equip. This is a true test scale on load bars and um, we just keep this up at the house but when we're working them come down and plug this in weigh them before they go into the chute and then we know what they weigh if we need to doctor them it's pretty convenient. Okay so the plan here now is we're going to get the cow that I'm buying into this first working corral but before we do that we're going to start kicking a lot of these other cows out. We're back at the ranch with our new cow and I think we need to get her out of the trailer. It's hot, I'm sure she's probably thirsty and probably ready to get some green grass. So let's get her out of here. I'm not really sure if this cow has ever seen a hot wire before so it looks like she might have hit it because she's still where she should be and uh, right now I'm glad that I got that new Gallagher S100 box up there because I know it's putting out a pretty strong shock. I was kind of laughing to myself because the first bull that I bought was this last I guess December and he was an older bull. The next bull that I bought a couple months later was part of a pair. And I know some people asked when they see the calf that I'm raising for breeding, they're like, well, how's that gonna work? He's gonna inbreed. Well, no, because that calf is from an outside herd. He wasn't born here. So I bought him and his mother. And now I have bought a bull calf that is not born yet, but they are able to ultrasound and figure out the sex of the calf before it's even born. Because this calf is, um, you know, made from donor eggs, he's not actually related to the cow that will be his mother. So in the future, this calf will be able to breed the cow that gave birth to him, which is just kind of mind boggling. The new cow is due to give birth uh, September 14th. And as I'm filming this, I believe it's August 2nd. So in about six weeks, she should be giving birth to our new bull calf. Hopefully there's no problems with that. He's healthy and all that goes well. Because she is in the later stages of her pregnancy, I'm a little nervous that my cows are gonna try to start fighting with her because it's pretty common uh, animal behavior really across all species. When you introduce a new member to the herd, they kind of have to fight it out and figure out the pecking order. I don't want her to get hurt. I don't want anything to happen to the unborn bull calf. So to me, it looks like she's kind of exploring the perimeter out here and, you know, rubbing heads with a couple of the cows, but nothing too intense. It's not like when you put new bulls together, uh, cows will fight a little bit, but not like bulls. And it's so hot this afternoon, I can't imagine any of them really feel like fighting much. 
So I think it's just going to be a lot of walking around, sniffing each other, and hopefully it stays calm. Well, Jeremy said that she was a loner, and it turns out he was right because she's back down here by herself, and she doesn't really look like she has any desire to get up with the other girls. She walked around here and explored a little bit, but now she just kind of went straight to eating, which is good. She's not fighting anybody, and I think that this shows that she's relaxed or getting relaxed. If you're in the area and you like the look of Jeremy's cows and you might want to get some of those genetics in your own herd, I'll leave some contact information for him. Otherwise, Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. This is another young prospect for us. This is a... Hey, Cal. Seriously. <laughs>